Parties, A Hymn of Hate by Dorothy Parker. I hate parties. They bring out the worst in me. There is the novelty affair given by the woman who is awfully clever at that sort of thing. Everyone must come in fancy dress. They are always 11 old-fashioned girls and 14 Hawaiian gentlemen wearing the native costume of last season's tennis clothes with a wreath around the neck. The hostess introduces a series of clean home games. Each participant is given a fair chance to guess the number of seeds in a cucumber, or thread a needle against time, or see how many names of wild flowers he knows. I scream in trick formations and punch like Volstead used to make, buoy up the players after the mental strain. You have to tell the hostess that it's a riot, and she says she'll just die if you don't come to her next party, if only a guarantee you went with that. Then there is the Bridge Festival. The winner is awarded an arts and crafts hearth brush, and all the rest get garlands of hothouse raspberries. You cut for partners and draw the man who wrote the game. He won't let bygones be bygones. After each hand, he starts getting personal about your motives in leading clubs, and one word frequently leads to another. At the next table, you have one of those partners who says it's nothing but a game after all. He trumps your ace and tries to laugh it off. And yet they shoot men like Yule. There is a day in the country. It seems more like a week. All the contestants are wedged into automobiles and you are allotted a space between two ladies who close in on you. The party gets a nice early start because everyone wishes to make a long day of it. They get their wish. Everyone contributes a basket of lunch. Each person has it all figured out that no one else will think of bringing hard-boiled eggs. There is the intensive picking of dogwood and no one is quite sure what poison ivy is like. They find out the next day. Things start off with a rush. Everyone joins in the old songs and points out cloud effects and puts in a good word for the colour of the grass. But after the first 50 miles, nature doesn't go over so big and singing belongs to the lost arts. There is a slight spurt on the home stretch and everyone exclaims over how beautiful the lights of the city look. I'll say they do. There is the informal little dinner party, the lowest form of taking nourishment. The man on your left draws diagrams with a fork, illustrating the way he is going to have a new sun parlour built on. And the one to your right explains soon business conditions will be better and why. When the more material part of the evening is over, you have your choice of listening to the Harry Lauder records or having the hostess hem you in and show you the snapshots of the baby they took last summer. Just before you break away and mutter something to the host and hostess about sometime soon you must have them over, over your dead body. I hate parties. They bring out the worst in me.